Okay, so let's uh, get started with the, uh, now this is the fourth module of uh, uh, week seven. So as uh, we'll, as I said towards the uh, very end of the last video, this uh, from this with this particular module, we'll, we'll talk about the thermal treatment. Maybe this and the one after this, where these two will be required to talk about the thermal treatment. So uh, in terms of the waste treatment technologies, anaerobic digestion and composting, those are mostly focused on the organic fraction and among the organic fraction, the biodegradable fraction. And when we talk about the thermal treatment, we are talking about things which have a good calorific value. So as part of the smart city initiative, say if you want to build a, a waste to energy plant, which is very getting very popular in Indian contests to have the waste to energy plant, we have to, first of all, the foremost thing we need to know is, okay, what is the calorific value of our waste? And when I say the calorific value of our waste, it's the waste which will be coming to the waste incinerator. That's again very, very critical. If you think about the waste that is produced in the home, if you take even the recyclables that most of us keep separated uh, for our kabadiwalas who comes and take out the newspaper, uh, take out, they take the magazines, newspaper, old books uh, for the kids, school books, a school notebook, uh, textbook, whatever. If you are throwing them away, uh, you have you don't really throw them away in a trash can. You try to sell it. Uh, you may get whatever four rupees per kg, six rupees per kg, ten rupees per kg. There are different rates for different items, but uh, you, we do get some money out of that. So people have a tendency to sell it, and most of those material actually end up in the informal recycling stream, and then finally goes into those recycling places. So they don't really show up in the municipal solid waste in the municipality dump site. And same thing with the plastics. Most of the good quality plastics actually end up there. But we still have some papers, we still have some plastic, we still have some packaging material, we still have a lot of things which uh, can potentially be recycled, but the technology is not, not out there right now in Indian contest or we, it's economically doesn't make sense to recycle those or it may be contaminated with something else. You have that uh, pizza boxes, uh, which is actually very good. Uh, uh, can be recycled, but then it, if you have the pizza sauces and everything mixed up with there, it doesn't get recycled and comes to uh, the waste stream. But out of in the waste stream also, like what comes to the primary prim like uh, primary collection point, and then to the secondary collection point, and then to finally to the dump site or to the incineration plant, the the amount of the nature of the waste all changes a little bit. Even at the primary collection or the secondary collection, we have these now rack pickers who will try to take out some of these valuables, especially some good plastics, some good paper, which could be there. And then again, these plastic papers have good calorific value. So what I'm trying to say is that we need to be really careful in terms of uh, when we go for waste to energy design to know realistically what is our true calorific value of the waste. Many times what the mistakes that we have done is we have actually uh, taken the calorific value to be too high because we take even the waste that we, we are trying to, I think maybe at my suspicion is that even at some places, the amount that is given to the Kabaliwalas is already also included in the in those calculations because some of those calorific value data that I have seen is like 5,000 kilocalories per kg, and those those numbers are too high even uh, in the way from the context of the Western world where they, I would say there are. Uh, uh, those kind of kabaliwalas and rack picker system is not that much common. So you don't see them over there and then most of these waste does end up in the landfill or in the recycling stream. So in, for the thermal treatment, calorific value, uh, like have a very good understanding of what is the real calorific value and the calorific value of not the waste produced at the homes, but the waste which will actually show up at your door at the thermal treatment plant. So that's, that's the like uh, if once we figured that out that's where we are making mistakes and uh, and that's why we are more, many times our waste to energy plants doesn't work because uh, uh, our calorific value get, gets diluted first of all we this uh, rack pickers and the kabadiwalas takes away our papers and plastics good quality which is very good in high calorific value then we have mixing mixing of non calorific rich waste like uh, street sweepings uh, construction and demolition waste bricks concrete all these things are mixing to our uh, dust, dirt, uh, those are all mixing with our uh, regular MSW which is goes to the dump site and then if you take the same waste and take it to a waste to energy plant, uh, effectively you are mixing so much of the waste material which are very low in calorific value that your effective calorific value goes down. So 
make and there is nothing like say is we what does that mean we that means that we need to improve the system it's a, first of all we need to uh, uh, the, the problem is uh, many times we don't acknowledge the problem that we have it's uh, m most of the municipalities and ulbs they know on their back of the head but they are afraid to put it in the front on the table that hey we we have this problem we have this collection issue where all the mixed waste is getting mixed up and for this mixed up waste your waste to energy plant is not going to work which we we know that but still we go ahead with the project because somebody wants us to go ahead with the project and then the project fails and unfortunately the technology gets the bad name you all know but those of you who are working in the waste energy waste waste management area you have know the example of the timarpur plant which was the first waste energy plant built in india and in in 80s and you know what happened to that so we don't want to repeat the timarpur uh, uh, mistakes again and again and again we we have we should learn from those mistakes and be honest about the situation that's the ma major problem we have is we are not many times we are not we are we know what we know the uh, the details but we don't put it in the black and white on the piece of paper that uh, we are i don't know why we are afraid to do that unless we acknowledge the problem then only we can solve the problem so and then that's the big thing in terms of waste energy plan so talking about that with that things in background let's look at why this but again waste energy is a very good uh, it, it's a good component of a integrated waste management and it's being used in many countries it's uh, many like in the western european countries japan korea uh, those places they are doing a lot of waste to energy china is building waste to energy plants uh, uh, like uh, many many of the waste energy plants are coming up in china so that's uh, and same thing could be done in india too there are now technologies which can work with the low calorific value they at least they claim to work with the low calorific value we need to test those claims and the places like iits can be used to test those claims because we have uh, we have the expertise to to, to uh, help the ulbs to help uh, the industry uh, or the government or whoever wants the help to uh, to test those claims whether the technology is really going to work or not going to work uh, at least uh, the, and then uh, we can go ahead with those uh, uh, projects uh, uh, and then then to make it successful ultimately the goal is to solve the problem of waste management it doesn't really matter which technology which use or who make the decision who doesn't make the decision at the end of the day if our garbage is managed properly it will lead to less uh, uh, impact on water less impact on air and less impact on our water and air means less disease for our uh, fellow citizens and that means better productivity in the economy as I, I think uh, people were talking about that as i, I think i've said that earlier as well we, there cannot be a healthy economy without a healthy workforce to have a healthy economy we need healthy workforce and to have healthy workforce we need to clean up the environment because that's environmental uh, pollution issues are one of the i would say big problem that as a country we are facing today and it's going to even multiply in future if we don't start addressing them in a very big scale we have to start things happening on the ground so with those things in mind let's start talking about this thermal treatment what are the some of the basics of that and how it could be applied in the indian context how it can be and what are the, the pros and cons and what are the things we should be careful about when we are trying to use it in uh, in country like india so as you know in the municipal solid waste uh, it comes from variety of sources we already kind of talked about that so initial few slides are kind of just a recap of uh, uh, what we have been talking about so far and then uh, we'll go into specifics so we get uh, waste coming from variety of sources uh, these are some of the sources where we, our municipal solid waste comes in municipal solid waste it could go for composting we talked about that it could go for anaerobic digestion uh, we talked about that then landfill is there incineration is uh, is one part where it could be uh, used so for uh, these uh, some of these processes can produce energy some of these processes use up energy so in the, for, as part of the incineration of course it uses energy and it also produces energy so we have to look at what is the net energy gain how much is the additional energy that could be produced uh, using a waste to energy plan uh, so that's uh, uh, is the part of that so that's uh, so why why waste to energy uh, it's it is one of the uh, like a environmental uh, importance of finding environmental safe uh, methods of handling and disposal of msw it, it's increasing substantially like we are trying to find how to better manage our municipal solid waste dumping in landfill is not a long term sustainable solution uh, you, i you, i think i i like I, i'm i 
I should not say I think I did show you the uh, that uh, how the globally waste is managed. If you forgot about it, go to in the first few uh, videos. I, I think it might be in the second video or maybe in the first video itself. I'm not sure right now in the week one. Uh, but where we had the global map and you saw the how the waste is managed globally that uh, data was few years old three four i think around three years old but it's still the data doesn't change overnight you see that for most of the countries the landfilling the bottom part was actually very high even in european union which is doing pretty good we have the uh, 30 percent of the waste was uh, going to the landfill and uk 49 percent and uh, us around 54 percent and india 91 percent if i remember that and uh, in some of the African countries, nearly 100% waste going to those dump sites. So but that's not the way to manage the waste because we are that's, by putting them in the dump site, we are polluting the environment, we are polluting the soil, we are polluting the air, we are polluting the surface uh, water and all those things and potentially groundwater as well. So, but that's not the su su sustainable solution, uh, dumping in landfills, oops, uh, dumping in landfill is not a uh, sustainable solution. And in fact, the pressure, uh, it, it landfilling is constantly, there is, it, it, the pressure against landfilling is there. Unfortunately, as of today, we, we don't have technology to not have landfill. I would love to have a day when we don't have to build a landfill. But as I said, I think in the earlier, one of the earlier video as well, unfortunately, we don't have uh, that technology available today. As uh, even the European Union, 30% of the waste goes to landfill. Some of the best cities also send few percentages of the waste going to the landfill. Because even after waste to energy plant, you will have the residual, the ash, the bottom ash and the fly ash. Part of the fly ash and the bottom ash, you can use it for certain purposes. But there will always be some uh, waste material which has to find a resting place and landfill provides that resting place. So that's why we may not like the landfill but it's still landfill will be there and uh, at least uh, in next 20, 30, 40 years. So what we need is actually build engineered landfill. That is one part of the solution but we need waste to energy plant, we need the compost plant or the anaerobic digestion plant based on the situation. So everything needs to be on the table and then based on what works better for your city, for your smart city, you choose that because things but may work good for Delhi may not work good for Cochin or what works good for in Ahmedabad may not work good for Guwahati. So it depends on uh, uh, your local condition, the type of waste, the weather condition, the rainfall pattern, all those things plays a role in terms of uh, coming up with a better design of integrated waste management plan. So landfilling, again, we don't want to have, but unfortunately, we don't have any other option. We do need landfill, at least for the waste, after doing all the treatment. I'm not saying just take the waste and put it in an engineer landfill. That's not the solution. That's not a sustainable solution. You do the treatment, but the residual from the treatment will be there, and that will, you will need a place uh, like landfill, uh, which can take those uh, material because we have to dispose those materials somewhere. That's why European Union who has been working on this for last 40 some uh, years, is still have to have manage a landfill. But the landfills are engineered landfill, not the dump sites. So uh, in major cities and tourism areas, municipal solid waste is being produced uh, at a, uh, like a big rate. Uh, there is a substantial amount. Uh, there is a lot of renewable bio energy sources there. And that's the why we need, uh, there is a uh, opportunity for development and deployment of cost effective energy recovery system. So there is a lot of, uh, there is an interest in waste to energy and there is a uh, waste to energy can be done if done if it's done properly. Only thing is that proper selection of technology and proper homework before to use the technology. So in terms of uh, MSW, if you look at, uh, in terms of the amount of food livings, organic waste and other stuff, you have nearly 64% is organic, so which could be used uh, as a uh, as a uh, like an energy source. So, in terms of the carbon neutrality, which is based on uh, on the life cycle, as indicated, that 36 percent of the total CO2 emissions from incineration of unsorted waste are of fossil origin, which implies 64 percent is carbon neutral. And this is again this this uh, this carbon neutral and uh, is kind of a piece of a debate. For now, we'll just take it that anything which is biogenic carbon is the carbon neutral, and anything which is the fossil fuel origin is uh, is uh, like a not. Uh, this is the CO2 emission from incineration. So, in terms of what is trying to say that incineration even works out better from a, a climate change perspective, 
and then you have plastics, papers and other things, uh, plastic paper, you have the plastics uh, here. We have plastics, uh, we have the plastic paper and other material which uh, here is, uh, we have the plastic, we have paper, we have uh, wood, uh, we have clothes. So all these materials can, will burn and will produce some energy out of that. So those things can be, has calorific value as well. So why waste to energy? Uh, it's a solution of a solid waste disposal problem. It's not to, uh, it's a solution is, it's not to simply add more waste to energy plants. It should actually, there should be a variety of options as we were talking about. We should look at the variety of options and the ultimate goal is to minimize the effect on the environment while maximizing the conversion and recovery of energy and material. So waste to energy is part of it. Uh, it's one part of the, one part of that uh, uh, solution, but it's not the only part of the solution. So the solution of this problem must be able to integrate the four options. There are four options for the management of MSW. We have the source reduction, we have recycling, including composting, we have conversion to energy and landfilling. So all these four options has to be on the table and then based on where you are, which one will work, how is the market situation, what products you can sell about amount of recycling, whether the compost can be sold there, whether anaerobic digester can be set up with the production of gas and the gas could be used as an energy source, waste to energy, whether we have a good calorific value. So all those things need to be evaluated and then we can come up with a, a solution which is integra integration of all the four options which is available uh, for the waste to energy. And as the population is becoming more and more urban, as you can see from this particular graph, uh, this is uh, like a population, the y-axis shows you the population in living in urban areas and uh, x-axis is showing you the year. So we are somewhere uh, uh, between 2016, 18, right, somewhere over here, 17. So if you look at this data, we are looking at, I'm not using a scale properly here, but almost we are slightly more than 50% now. So we have more population living in urban area than in rural area, globally. This is a global data. So people living in urban areas are actually more than the rural area. So what does that mean? Urban areas, more waste produced, uh, more uh, uh, like a, a folk, uh, stress on the urban infrastructure. We have more slums and those kind of uh, developing from there. So, and all these adds complexity in terms of development of any smart city or, or waste management system and all that. So more and more urbanization, more uh, higher is the amount of waste that gets produced. That's the historically what we have seen. So that means more and more waste coming out, more and more waste to handle to the, for, by these municipalities. So, and then as uh, we reach uh, around 2040, when say some like our, our kids will grow up, and that nearly more than 60%, 60-65% will be in the urban area and that would be a, a big challenge in terms of managing the urban infrastructure. So that's why development of uh, a good integrated solid waste management plant is very, very critical. So this image actually this is coming from US EPA, one of the US EPA uh, document. So when we talk about integrated solid waste management, what we are saying that you need to, you need to talk about waste prevention you need to talk about recycling and composting, and you also need to talk about combustion, landfilling, and uh, incineration. So all these things should be there. So it's all these part of the uh, pie has to be there, and then together they give you a good integrated waste management system. And when you try to go about all this uh, stuff, you need to really talk to local people. So it's, a, it's in terms of development of an integrated waste management, this particular slide you saw in the introduction video. So you start from for any particular uh, city, say you are uh, trying to have a, a smart city, you are developing a smart city where you are trying to have a very good waste, to man waste management plan. That's the ultimate goal is to have a good working sustainable waste management plan. So for that, first of all, the number one what we need to do is to you start with, you identify the need. First step is what type of waste and currently operated. So what is, what is the need? What, are, what, what is our need? What, what is our requirement? Different cities may have different requirement. Different types of city will have different requirement. So once you have this requirement identified, you review the existing system. So there is something going on, may not be perfect, but there is something going on in the city right now. So once you have identified the need, the next step is you go and look at the uh, existing system. What are the things that we in the, among the existing system is working? What is not working? 
Many times people will say nothing is working. Well, that's not really true. Maybe around 5% is working, 10% is working, 20% is working. We should not be that much pessimistic as well. So, but in terms of the existing, what are the good things which is like uh, working in the, so if you have uncontrolled dumps, where they are located, how is the waste currently managed, what role do uh, waste pickers or scavengers plays in recycling waste. So that is actually in many, many cities, they are doing a very uh, good job in terms of that. Then what is the existing regulation? We need to also look at the regulation part. What is the existing regulation? What are the existing laws adequate for integrated solid waste management? Uh, is the law not only adequate, is it really implementable? Many times our laws are really too strict to be implementable. That's also even as a very good environmental friendly uh, law abiding citizen of the country, you may not be able to follow the entire rule of municipal solid waste just because it's you don't have the infrastructure. Uh, you don't even if you want to follow the rule, the infrastructure is not there to help you follow the rule, and then you basically give up at some point of time. So whether the we need to even have a very critical evaluation of what is the what is the existing regulation? Is the existing regulation good enough? Is it uh, too good to be implemented? So those things, whether it's implementable, that's like another uh, idea. I don't know how how closely we think about that. We have to also think about that the rule we make we can make the best rule in the world. But is it really going to be implemented? Again, uh, it's uh, uh, it's the rule uh, of uh, say if we take if we compare our rule with the Western European countries and try to take their rule of today and try to implement that in India, as of uh, as of date as of today date, it's I would say it's not proper. It's I have a strong reservation of that because uh, the European Union worked on this waste management for nearly 40 years and then they came up with the rule that they have today. This was not their rule 40 years ago or even 30 years ago or even 20 years ago. They are more restricted today because they built up the system. There is a system has to be built up. Then you can have a very strict rule. In the very beginning, if you make a very strict rule, then the, the rule cannot be followed and even this easier part of the rule will be ignored. And because they say, okay, I can, I can hardly do anything about this rule. So what's the point of even following even 1% or 10% or 20% which I can follow? So let's make the rule which is can be implemented, which people can follow and make, build the capacity as the capacity is built up for, uh, for the municipalities, for the ULBs and make this, uh, then uh, keep on, the rule has to go along with the capacity building. We cannot have a rule like at a very high level and our capacity is at this level. There, there is a lot of gap in between and that unless those gap is filled up, we cannot uh, follow the rule. We cannot even only always blame the private sector or this. Uh, it's actually to build the capacity. It's a requirement of the is a, is a government requirement. Like we have to build. The, that's how people have done it around the world. So it's uh, because that's it's a building of the infrastructure. Those things we need to do. Of course, you can have PPP and all those things coming into picture. So regulation. Uh, this is uh, it's again very very critical to look at the regulation. How to what whether it's uh, how is it then the new municipal solid waste management rules 2016, we which we already kind of reviewed a little while ago in a few few uh, uh, weeks ago uh, does simplifies the thing. But it's still there are certain problems which we highlighted during that talk, and then you organize a decision making framework. Like who will make the decision? That's another. Uh, so in my view, the technical decision should be left to the technical people or the, like the, uh, the, the policy makers and other, other places should get a very good technical input when they make any policy. Unfortunately, that, it seems that that doesn't happening very well, in, especially in an Indian context. And so we need to have a decision making framework like who will make the decision like technical decision should be left with technical people of course the uh, the policy makers the our uh, leaders our ministers they are a they ultimately they are responsible so because they are the elected representative but then the technical people are also there they also have certain responsibility so if there is we need to the technical input should be solid enough and it should be if if say, uh, I will give you a hypothetical scenario, certain minister, say if a certain minister wants to get some certain thing built, but say minister may not know the technical detail. And uh, if they may sometimes may even get influenced by some vendors coming in and try and give them very beautiful presentation. But as a technical person, people like me who is there in that particular organization, it's their responsibility to 
tell that uh, minister or whoever is that, that sir this is not really going to work because of this 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 problem and then probably we can make it work in this way or the other way because rather than going ahead with this blindly with that project which the person who is actually implementing the project knows that the project may fail because he te technically doesn't make sense to him but he is doing it just because there is a pressure from up that that's why he is going to implement that project that's really that's a bit, we are wasting money we are, and then ultimately everybody gets the bad name so we have to be we have to start getting out of that mindset uh, and then uh, and hold our ground sometimes so if it may uh, like look bad for a minute but ultimately people will realize that uh, this is what needs to be done so it's very critical like who makes what decision and people in my uh, people should make decision based on their expertise then you establish the objective what is what we need to do so this, what we are trying to cover is how to go about setting up a integrated waste management plan for a smart city and then you do establish your objective uh, what what objectives uh, uh, you have in terms of uh, short term and long term goal because there are certain things you can achieve in short term certain things will take a long term to then then you uh, find out what are the components uh, what waste management activities you can do every city has certain limitation whether should we go for waste prevention recycling and uh, uh, like it will help you to find out your objectives then you compare the different options you do your come up with the options compare the different options and then develop the integrated solid waste management plan so this is how it should uh, go about Right now, uh, like I am working, uh, working with the uh, city of Guwahati, uh, GMC, Guwahati Municipal Corporation to develop their uh, integrated waste management plan and I am trying to follow the same route. Uh, of course, there are certain limitations there in terms of uh, certain logistics and other things but we are uh, trying to follow the same rule and that is what ideally I think it should be done. There will always be some deviations here and there but uh, we can go around this, uh, this route and then we can come up with our integrated solid waste management plan. So once we have this integrated solid waste management plan, the city should go ahead and implement it and then once you implement then you again you will find out that uh, you have to keep on evaluating it from time to time and, uh, and then you keep on modifying it from time to time. So that is uh, evaluation and modification is also uh, needed from time to time in terms of uh, uh, so then again the circle kind of continues so this is how it is done uh, the, i was uh, uh, we i used to live just in the outskirts of toronto there was a city so i was i served on their uh, city solid waste management plan as a co-chair of uh, so management plan steering committee and we used to follow the same principle like every five years we, the city will come back and revise it so it's a, it's a dynamic exercise you identify your need go about the, all the steps then you come up with the plan you implement the plan and then you learn something new you evaluate it so every five years you come back and revise your plan and that's you keep on improving improving and improving and that's that's how our regulation also needs to keep on improving once we make all those capacity building then our regulations can become more stricter 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 so if we make the regulation too strict to start with actually people it's it, it becomes too hard uh, so, so as we say that uh, in uh, in Hindi, we say that if agar ab dhaga ko bahut tezi se khichenge, to dhaga toot jayega. So that's what that's the problem here. So if you make the regulation too strict, that uh, the the things will break, and then the whole system doesn't work. So I'm not saying that make it too relaxed and let's everything have a uh, go to hell in terms of the environmental problem. But I'm saying that we have to look at it from a realistic point of view. So that's uh, in terms of uh, we like a uh, uh, to, we, I wanted to give you a like a quick overview of how these things are done. So, we will come back uh, to our thermal uh, discussion in the uh, starting in the next video, but these two were very very like important in terms of looking at the integrated waste plan. We did talk about this in the very beginning of the class, so kind of in the middle I wanted to recap and re-give you a uh, this, these are very important concepts which you should uh, take away message from this uh, course and probably at the end of the course again we will talk about something similar to uh, kind of, so, because something which is important needs to be told again and again and again so that that's it uh, stays in your head. So with that uh, again any questions, any problem, any issues related to the course you are more than welcome to put it on the discussion board, uh, we will we'll be happy to respond to you. And uh, I hope that you are enjoying the course. You are, uh, uh, and it's it's helpful to you. 
If there is certain topics which uh, like you thought that was not covered well, you can always give your feedback as well. Any, any feedback is appreciated. You don't worry about that. So we just give your feedback. Uh, we'll uh, try to, we still have four weeks left. We'll try to discuss that. Or if we cannot do it in the, at least in the next course, uh, in the next revision of the course, we'll try to incorporate it. So it's the goal is to make this course better and better. And it's more useful. So if any components which you think as a waste practitioner, you think that we forgot to mention, we forgot to talk about, raise that in the discussion board. We'll try to bring it to the course and try to address it in the remaining uh, for some weeks that we have. Thank you.